All right, are we ready? Yeah! It's now time for the Team High School Show on ESPN Radio 1017 The Team. Stand by for action. The team is your home for the best coverage of high school sports anywhere. Here to bring you the show is Gary Harris. He's sexy, sassy, and full of spunk. Right here on ESPN Radio 1017 The Team, the flagship station for APS Athletics. Good Saturday morning, everybody. Another nice-looking day out there. A little bit overcast, but uh, should be some great weather for a high school game today or the Lobo game tonight. They play the Aggies at 6 o'clock. Thanks for tuning in. I am Gary Hare, and this is the Team High School Show. We're going to try to catch up on all the high school action going on in the Albuquerque metro area. I want to thank Nusenda Credit Union for sponsoring the show each week, and the Nusenda Nusenda Credit Union Community Stadium is where I'll be at 1 o'clock for the kickoff today as Rio Rancho faces Atrisco Heritage Academy. If you want to see a good football game, well, maybe three-quarters of a game, head out there. We will not have any high school football games on the air this week due to our coverage of the Major League Baseball playoffs right here on the team. Our next high school game will be on October 16th, Valencia versus Berlin. And without further ado, well, we got a full lineup today. I got four guests. We're going to start talking high school football with the guru of high school football in the state from nmpreps.com, Kyle Henderson. Good morning, Kyle. Hey, Gary, what's going on? What a fantastic football game last night. Well, let's start right away by giving a key play in that game and get your analysis. Hit it, Kelly. And here's Ortega being rushed. Ortega has to get rid of it. Throws it high, right sideline. It is tipped. It's a catch. Is it inbounds? They They're call it a catch. Yes. They're calling it a catch at the 31-yard line. Marcus Williams, a tightrope back. A great catch by Williams. Absolutely tiptoeing on the sideline. Big play by a big guy. Talk about that play. Cleveland is going down. Final score. Final drive of the game, right? I mean, it's 34-34. Marcus Williams, who I keep saying is a Division One athlete, New Mexico or New Mexico State, offered this kid. He comes up with a remarkable catch on the sideline. I was right there. I just saw it. And uh, a few plays later, they punch it in. Uh, they, they defeat. Cleveland defeats El Dorado last night. 41-34. to Remarkable game. First time Cleveland has been hit in the mouth. 14-0. They trailed. Came back tied it at halftime. It was back and forth for a while until Cleveland scored the final touchdown. Excellent matchup. I think we'll be seeing those two teams in November or quite possibly December. All week long, people were asking me who I thought would win. Uh, I went uh, publicly and said 31-28 Cleveland. I didn't think there'd be that much scoring in the game. There was. Cleveland spots him the 14 nothing lead. Uh, again, I was using the old cliche. It'll probably come down to the team that makes the fewest mistakes, and I was talking about that with Scott Galetti just a few minutes ago. Cleveland had the early turnover. Uh, Nico Papadopoulos uh, fumbled it. El Dorado turned that. It turned out to be a nine-yard drive. They score on a 24-yard touchdown pass to David Inman, who I thought was probably the player of the game. Uh, and then the mistakes. Uh, they haunted El Dorado. They missed the PAT. They try the onside kick. They lose that out of bounds. Right after Gabe Ortega throws a pick to David Inman, uh, El Dorado fumbles the ball away two plays later. That was costly. That was their big fullback that coughed that up. And then they get uh, also an illegal substitution, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. El Dorado clearly made more mistakes, and it cost the Eagles in the long run. Now, I certainly agree with that. And I was speaking with Coach Charlie Dotson before the game, and you know he was like, this isn't a game that we have to win. Of course, we're going to try to to play our best tonight against Cleveland, but you know we, we've been a We've been down a tough stretch, and they have. They had Volcano Vista, then they had Mesa, then they had Cleveland. Next week, they jump into district play against La Cueva, who they're heavily favored against. But last night, I think El Dorado made a clean statement that they're a contender this year. And last year, the score was 57-56, to El Dorado winning. El Dorado has still won their last 15 out of 18 games, which is pretty remarkable at the 6 A level. Jace Jackson, the quarterback, I don't think we've talked about enough about him this season. He had a fantastic game. He can spin the football. And, uh, you know, Noah Schweitzer, the, the, the defensive end, Tuli, I thought did a great job last night. Uh, and I tweeted this out. El Dorado, do not hang your head for one minute. Fantastic football team. That Cleveland football team is going to be the favorite in every single game. And to come into Cleveland on homecoming night and play them within a touchdown, I think speaks volumes of not only El Dorado, but the continued job that Coach Charlie Dawson does with the program. Well, no doubt. And in all honesty, people out there, it's nice to be number one the first week of, of October, but it's a lot nicer to be number one the first week of December. Exactly. Nobody plays for week five, six, or seven. You play for week 14, you play for the big one in December, and you try to get better. And, of course, these games matter for seeding, 
but they mean absolutely nothing in the in the grand scheme of things other than providing you know a great atmosphere for high school football. I mean, how many people were out there? Gary, eight thousand. I mean, we we surely tested the the home stands last night. Yeah, there were people on the berm at the north end of the field. The Eldorado fans showed up. You were on the sideline. I was on the sideline. The TV cameras were there last night. But the buzz uh, on the sidelines and even up in the press box, Manzano knocking off Mayfield twenty one seventeen. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, the Trojans have now lost three in a row, which is very surprising, obviously. I mean, that's not something that we really talk about each year. I mean, Mayfield is generally, you know, a, a eight-win team, nine-win team. Now they're three and three, beaten by Manzano last night, who is also three and three on the season. I feel that it's Chad Adcox, who's the head coach of Manzano, his biggest win ever as a coach now, taking over for Aaron Ocampo. And, um, you know, Manzano last week, they lost 27 to 21 in overtime to Cibola. So beating Mayfield last night, it keeps them in the playoff hunt. I was really surprised by it. Manzano's a young team with a lot of talent, a lot of sophomores and juniors. In a couple of years, they're going to be very good. But beating Mayfield this year, um, I mean, Isaac Vance played last night. I mean, uh, you know, they took it to Mayfield. I mean, Mayfield has now lost three in a row. Uh, it shakes up the seating. It shakes up the rankings. Upset of the night, no question about it. And they did have Isaac Vance. And uh, Marty Watts was asking the rhetorical question, when's the last time Mayfield lost three in a row? And they go most seasons without losing three games in a whole year. So three in a row is probably a rarity there for Coach Michael Bradley. Yeah, I mean, you look at the Mayfield Trojans, and they've made it, they've made it to the big school state championship the last two years. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they turn it around entering district play. They got Oñate next week, Oñate, with a big 52-0 to win over Rio Grande. The week before that, they beat West Mesa 49-0. So maybe Oñate is on the up swing. It could be an interesting district game at the Field of Dreams next week. Oh, another game. Two of the top tens, regardless of class. Two of the top ten teams, I should say. Artesia Falls at Las Cruces, 41-25. What can you tell the listeners about that game, Kyle? Well, I figured that Las Cruces would win that game. I actually picked Artesia early on, and then later in the week I found out that Artesia quarterback Justin Hodling, he's a guy we talk about weekly who throws for 300-plus yards. He tore his calf, calf muscle late in the game against Carlsbad back in week five. So he didn't play last night, and they started a quarterback by the name of Ty. Taylor Newell, who actually threw for 360 yards. But last night, Las Cruces got their fourth victory of the, of the year. Cameron Miller had a fantastic evening, rushing for 245 yards, throwing for 100 yards. A big announcement coming from Cameron Miller later today, the Las Cruces quarterback. He's committing. I've, um, I've heard, so stay tuned to my Twitter. Stay tuned to nmfrops.com. He's committing between either New Mexico and New Mexico State. I think he picked a good day to do that. Yeah, and I, uh, well, you'd think he'd probably go to New Mexico State, but stranger things have happened. Any other games uh, that were played this week you want to talk about uh, that you, you were at or uh, are privy to? Well, I mean, table at Thursday night, they jumped to 5-1. and one. Nobody's really talking about them. Sure, they played a light schedule, but who thought that Rod Williams and the Steve Cougars would be 5-1 and one right now? Um, that, that's something that's very interesting to me. Also, you have the Espanola Sun Devils for the first time in school history. 6-0, and oh, Gary. 6-0 and oh on the season last night. They smashed Taos 60-16. to 16. They got a light schedule. Could Espanola go undefeated this season. Uh, it's a something. It's an interesting storyline to follow. So we'll have yeah. to stay tuned on that. I think the only time Espanola Valley's ever been six and zero was a basketball season. Yeah, that is a big basketball town. But uh, you know they're doing it football football wise too. Miguel Medina uh, has turned things around. And uh, next week or in a couple weeks they got Del Norte, which will be the first. Um, you know, somewhat decent school they play. So I'm I'm intrigued to see if Espanola could spin it out. Well, I tell you what, you talk about Siebla being 5-1 and one and Rod Williams and the Cougars riding with J.P. Murray at his game day show last night, but I don't think anybody has a tougher uh, three games coming up in a row, Volcano Vista, Rio Rancho, and Cleveland, and that's arguably the toughest district, 1-6-A, but boy, uh, they are going to be battered and bruised playing those three teams in a row. Yeah, and I think we touched on this last week. If Siebla can somehow, um, you know, maybe pull off an upset, you know, against Volcano, uh, Cleveland or Rio Rancho, which is tough to see. Um, they could certainly still beat Santa Fe, so they could technically finish the season six and four. I think they've already punched their playoff ticket. And remember, they entered the, the playoffs last year, I believe, as a 12th seed, and who did they beat? 
They beat the Cleveland Storm in the first round. So um, Rod Williams doing a great job. He's a young coach. I like his energy. Kazion Martin's a running back to watch. He scored five touchdowns Thursday night. He's a big-time player. Well, there's nobody that, that remembers that game, that loss to Cibola over at Cleveland and, and Heath Ridenauer because that's something they've been pointing at and talking about, uh, although they just go game to game. and They're they're off this next week, then they play Santa Fe, but he's not going to let his boys forget that, let them get complacent and look past anybody. Coming up this next week, a couple of big district openers, Le- Cueva plays El Dorado Friday night at Wilson Stadium at 7 o'clock. The next day, another 2-6-A opener. Sandia plays Manzano at Wilson at 1 o'clock. What do you think about those games? El Dorado and Charlie Dodson want to win that district opener. They can't afford to lose to a, a struggling La Cueva team. And Manzano showed more than spunk last night beating Mayfield. And Sandia has shown some, uh, some fallibility at times. What do you think about those two big district 2-6-A contests? Love the district matchups. I, I want to see how Sandia can enter district play. I was really high on them in the preseason. I think uh, James Yotis of the Journal was as well. And I don't think they've played to their potential quite yet. Manzano, as you mentioned, is hot. El Dorado playing La Cueva in a big rivalry game could have potentially be a trap game for El Dorado coming off a three-game tough stretch. Are they battered? Are they bruised? Is everybody healthy entering that La Cueva game? La Cueva's been known to take them to the wire no matter the talent level. I love the district matchup. Here's where the games really start to matter. Here's where they start to count. District play is going to heat up. Six days still wide open. Uh, El Dorado proved that last night. Very exciting game. Very exciting times. Love high school football. And uh, people, if they're curious, the, uh, there were three undefeated 6-8 teams before last night's game. Obviously, El Dorado has now had its first setback. Alamogordo, the other team that had been 5-0, and blasted Deming 56-12. to No surprise there. So it's Alamogordo and Cleveland still undefeated. Today, some big games. Want to know if you're going to be out with the family or going to be going to any games. At Milne Stadium, St. Michael's plays St. Pius at 1 o'clock. Carlsbad faces Sandy at Wilson Stadium, also at 1 at New Senate Community Stadium. Rio Rancho faces the Trisco Heritage Academy. 2 o'clock at Albuquerque Academy, one of the best venues in the state to watch football. Socorro's Warriors play the Chargers. And at 2 o'clock, and this will be a long trip, you could probably get there if you leave right now, Piedra Vista plays at Roswell. But uh, what's on tap for the Hendersons today? Well, I think 11 o'clock, i got to go see the battle of the churches, right? you got St. Mike's, my alma mater, taking on St. Pius. St. Pius trying to get to 6-0 this season. Uh, Carl's bad to see if they can swing out their first victory playing San Diego. That's a That could be an interesting matchup. I mean, those two teams have played each other quite a few times over the last couple of years. I think Rio Rancho rolls today. Um, watch for the Rams to to enter district play red hot. I think they're going to, you know, they're, they're still real Rancho. I mean, the, the heat is certainly on Cleveland, but real Rancho is still capable of, of doing some things come playoff time. Um, Academy Chargers taking on, who did you say Academy was playing? Academy play Socorro. Oh, Academy and Socorro. Well, Socorro was 0-10 last year. Now they're 3-1 and under second-year head football coach Clevin Redding. Um, Academy snapped Escalante's 16-game winning streak last week defeating the Escalante Lobos, so that could be a tricky game. All right, thanks for the comments. Watch nmpreps.com today or Kyle's Twitter feeds to see where Cameron Miller's going. We'll talk to you next week, Kyle. Thanks for joining the show.